Yeah, it was the longest, hardest sex we ever had in our relationship. I was super happy, you know, all the tension was released, we're together again, everything is perfect. So I met this girl a couple of years ago, actually, and she was not a normal girl at all. She was a star. She was the one everybody wants. So I kept in touch with her. I was friendly with her. I tried to hook up with her. I failed many times. But over time, as I grew as a man and my network grew and we met each other over and over, we ended hooking up finally it was beautiful and we actually ended up in a relationship so i was super happy at first i brought her onto tour you know on the coaching tour we lived together but then something changed or let's say i learned more about her the more she was with me the more she started nagging me testing me sometimes even being aggressive with her voice towards me and it really got to me i was like fuck who why is she like that? And I sometimes I felt insecure. I felt like, you know, she was like testing certain areas of my masculinity that melt made me feel weak and almost made me feel like I don't deserve her. And it got me into a lot of thinking and reflecting and ultimately made me much stronger and made me have a really good relationship. But this is the topic I want to talk about today. It's about women who are going to test your boundaries, who are going to test your triggers over and over again a feminine woman tends to test her man and this is a thing that she won't just stop at a certain point it keeps going over and over and if you're the kind of man and i assume you are because you're watching this video who wants a feminine partner because you are a strong masculine man and you're on a path of developing your masculinity then pay close attention to this video i'm gonna go really deep into how to handle women and how to set boundaries and much more. So sit back and pay attention. Part one, why she's doing it. So let's discover first why she would even do such a thing. Why does a woman always test her man? Why is she constantly nagging? Why is she never stopping? First of all, we have to take on the mindset that that's a good thing. It is a good thing that she's testing you. It in a way means she respects you as a man and didn't decide yet to leave you anyway. She has to do it. It's literally her job. Women are the sexual gatekeepers and we get the same stuff doing day game approach, right? Talking to a girl on the street. Other pickup artists call this a shit test, right? She's like shit testing you. I don't like this expression, to be honest. I see it more as a test to see if I'm honest, if I'm really want to talk to her, if I'm bullshitting her, if I'm really strong in my intention or if I'm just running a routine, I'm talking to 20 girls a day because, you know, some coach told me to, or if I'm really into her, if I mean it. She needs to do that early on because she's the gatekeeper. She needs to know, is she making the right choice in talking to me, in going on a date with me, in having sex with me, right? So she needs to do that early on. And then the same theme continues in the relationship. Is she wasting her time with me? Can I handle her? And is she right in still having sex with me, getting attached to me, being my partner, being seen with me? So if you see it like that, it is almost her job to test me in that sense. That's the only way she can really do that. So I want you to take on the mindset that a woman testing you, no matter if it's early or late in a relationship, is a good thing and it's your job to learn how to deal with it. Now, I wanna read you a section from David Data's book, all-time classic, must read if you are a man on your path, the way of the superior man. So David Data is writing, your woman knows your weaknesses better than anybody. She knows where you will falter and give up. She knows the degree of mediocrity you will settle for. And she knows your true capacity as a full man, a man of free consciousness and love. Her gift, if she's a good woman, is to test you with her darkest moods over and over and over until your consciousness is unbordered by feminine challenge and you're able to pervade her with your love just as you are here to pervade the world. In response to your fearless consciousness, she will drench your world in love and light. And furthermore, he's saying, the most loving woman are the women who will test you the most. She wants you to be your fullest, most magnificent self. She won't settle for anything less. She knows it is true of you. She knows in your deepest heart you are free. You are Shiva. Anything less than that will torment. And as you know, 
she's quite good at it. Powerful words, huh? <laughs> I recommend you read this book. It's a must read. Now, is every test she throws at you totally reasonable and to test you and to build a stronger connection with you? No. Some girls are just crazy. Sometimes she's just a crazy bitch. But let's talk about that later. Part two, understanding your own triggers. So it's your duty as a man to most and foremost understand your own psychology, understand your traumas, your triggers, your fears, the things that are inside you that make you overreact, that make you have reactions that might be unreasonable. And your woman will find that, as David Data says, pretty quickly anyway, and she's really good at testing you. So you might as well get a head start. Next time you get triggered, observe yourself. Become more aware, slow down and think, why are you triggered? What triggered you exactly? Is it something in your past? Is it reminding you of someone who was unfair to you in the past? So I'm gonna be vulnerable here and share a personal story out of my life that relates to this. The year was 2021. Me and this girl, we had a bit of a discussion before, a bit of an argument. But I decided to, you know, be the, the bigger man and to, to look over it, to ignore it. So we went to a concert and it was beautiful. We listened to the music. We were in Spain. It was great. We got drunk before and after the concert. Then we got high. You know, I have history with these girls. It was this amazing evening that just went better and better and it became really erotic and naughty. Then obviously started having sex. First really soft, being high, sensual. And then basically to release the argument before it got really rough and I fucked her really, really hard and she loved it. And it was probably at that point, yeah, it was the longest, hardest sex we ever had in our relationship. I was super happy, you know, all the tension was released, we were together again, everything is perfect. And the next day, I kind of, I guess I wanted to feel good about myself, right? Every guy wants to feel good about themselves here and there and we want to get feedback. A classic one is that guys ask, you know, like, how was I? Which women obviously don't like hearing really because what are they supposed to say? So I thought I'm smarter and I phrased it differently and I started a whole conversation about a different thing and then kind of led into it and asked at some point, I'm like, oh, how was like yesterday for you? How was your experience or something like that? She reacted in a way, I don't remember exactly what she said, but basically like, ah, it wasn't special for me. It wasn't my first time, something like this. Or she asked me like, oh, you think, you think it was special for me? So in a teasing way. And I instantly reacted like so bad. I was like angry inside, disappointed, sad, vulnerable. Because, you know, I was like, fuck, it was this great night and she treats it like it was nothing and how dare she and I spent all this money on this concert tickets and I waste all my time with her and I fuck her really hard and what, what do I get out of it, you know? So I obviously got super triggered and I later realized, like, if I'm such a strong man, why do I even need her compliment? Why do I need to fish for compliments? Why do I need double and triple and quadruple confirmation that this was good. The fact that she was there, that she spent a whole evening with me, that she didn't look at her phone a single time, that she, you know, tried out new things in bed that evening, that she followed my lead from start to finish, that she didn't complain a single time. That is her being there with me. That is her feminine essence. That is her saying, this is good. So me triple asking about it later just shows that I'm still, you know, that I'm insecure, which is not a bad thing. But uh, it's then her job to call that out instantly to make me aware and stronger and be the man that she needs in her life. So the principle here is that women are repulsed if they are the source of your approval. When you depend on them approving you, you know, they're not your mom. Your mom can tell you, you know, well done, I'm proud of you. If you give your girlfriend that job, she will resent you. Now, of course, it's a bit of a paradox because we're human. We want to hear good things about each other, right? We want to check in how we're doing with other people. But if you give your girlfriend the entirety of that job, you will have a problem in your relationship. So here's a quick list of common male triggers. You know, maybe some of you fit for you, some are not. But this is things that could usually trigger you. Comments about your masculinity, you not being good and bad, small dick, skinny, no muscles. You don't stand up to your boss or your colleagues. You're too girly, you're too weak. Also too weak in the gym, you couldn't lift her up. Or she's calling you fat, she's calling you lazy. 
you're distant, you're not emotional enough, you're too closed off, or you're too emotional, you're weepy, you're a wiener, you're too weak, uh, you don't give her enough attention, you never text back, you spend too much time with the boys, your vulnerability is not valid because you should be a man, man up, don't be a boy, you're not tough enough physically, you don't make enough money, you're too poor, you don't give me enough, you don't give me enough gifts. And then often that starts comparing, you know, oh, Kevin gave his girlfriend the newest iPhone and he even, you know, uh, added AirPods and you only give me this. Comparing you to her ex, to friends, to people on TV even, or on fucking Instagram. And she might flirt with other guys in front of you, doing stuff like that. Uh, in general, complaining about your hobbies, about how you spend time, how you spend money, criticizing your decisions in that way. You don't spend enough time with her friends. You don't wanna. You don't care enough about her. You don't care about her mom. You don't care how she's doing. You didn't ask her. She told you about this thing, and then you didn't make sure if she's 100% totally fine, and so on. So obviously the list is endless. You know, uh, there's a lot of things people can complain about, and that you might get triggered off, or that she might test. Now, obviously, if she's a girl who's giving you a list like that every day, yes, it's fucking annoying and you should probably get rid of her. But it is your job to start making your own list. Make your personal list and figure out what does actually really trigger you and why. Take, you know, your note-taking uh, tool of choice and you can stop this video now and maybe write down five, six things that usually trigger you or that triggered you in the past or you maybe have a memory of the relationship you're already in right now, you've been in, and just start writing down the trigger that happened and then maybe next to it, you can write down a reason why it happened, something that happened in the past for you that makes it so annoying and triggering for you. Now, childhood trauma is obviously a very deep topic. It goes beyond the scope of this video and there's a lot to be explored there. If you have you know, specific questions and you are open, you can obviously ask in the comments. And if you wanna go really deep and you wanna work with one of us, feel free to book a call with either me or Shay, who is an expert in inner game at The Natural Lifestyles. Uh, you find all the links below and you find online coaching packages on our website. So writing that list will give you clarity on what's triggering you in the past and hopefully in the future and most and foremost, it will make you start taking responsibility. It will stop you from constantly blaming other people. You know, that's a very common thing with everyone. It's very easy to blame other people. It's very difficult to blame yourself. So if every time you get triggered, it's somebody else's fault, but not yours, there's something wrong. There's something you're not doing right. You have to take responsibility for your own emotions, for your own reactions. So being aware, being conscious and start exploring that is the first step to doing that. Part three, different ways she might trigger you. Now, not every test a woman gives you might be to strengthen the relationship and to see if you the man and if you, you know, worthy of her time. Sometimes she's just being crazy. She's a human too. She has her own traumas, triggers with her own patterns that she repeated over and over time with her own past relationship, with her own fucked up parents and experiences and culture and background. She might even have mental illness, you know, uh, which can be totally not her fault. Maybe there's just something in her brain that makes her unwearable. And maybe you've overlooked it because you were in love and you love the look of her and, you know, the sex was amazing and she's the source of your intimacy for a long time or the only source of intimacy. And losing her would mean you don't have sex and you go back to being single and it's hard. So it's okay. And sometimes she's a bit crazy, but you know, she's a really nice person. Very easy to fall into those patterns as well. Yes, feminine women will test you and that's a good thing. But if it's a consistent pattern and it ruins your life and it gets aggressive, you know, maybe she's like literally threatening your health, then that's obviously not a good thing. You know, unhealthy ways of her pushing you can be revenge or holding a crazy grudge against you, sadistic tendencies, psychopathic tendencies. She, she might be a total control freak or she might destroy things or she doesn't, you know, accept your authority at all, never ever. Uh, borderline personality and sociopathic tendencies and of course, a combination of very deep childhood traumas of herself. Now, how to know if she a person like that? Again, I'm not an 
expert on that and I don't want to, you know, make any clinical statements here. But if you have an assumption, you know, it's just been not good for a long time and nothing you can really do or say fixes it, talk to a psychologist, describe the situation to him and he might be able to, you know, take a step back and see the whole picture. And hopefully if he's a good psychologist, also call you out on your bullshit. Part four, how to react when she triggers you. Now after a fight, an argument, a discussion, or simply some comment that triggered you, it's very tempting to react and you're probably very eager to make a decision or to, you know, have create some consequences for what you did. Now, when making a choice or a decision, it's very important, again, to be very aware of your own triggers. Very often, also in my experience, I thought I'm 100% right, she fucked up, she overstepped, you know, she was outside of her boundaries, it's not just feminine essence anymore, she's just a crazy bitch. And then I cooled down, I reflected, I took a walk, I maybe talked to a friend who has more relationship uh, experience than I do. I talked to my mentors, my relationship mentors, my fellow coaches, and I realized, ah, damn, she actually acted pretty reasonably. And surprise, surprise, again, it was my triggers, my traumas that made me react that way. So the first lesson is if you're in an elevated state, if you feel aggressive, if you want to pay back and, you know, make her feel bad because you feel bad or anything like that, cool down. Go out of the house, go out of the apartment, take a walk, listen to some music, uh, call someone you like, and often that can help prevent something irrational or crazy to happen. Now, after that, if you still feel something, which you probably will, you kind of have three choices where to go from then. And it depends how important is she to you, how important is your time to you, do you even want to be in a relationship right now? Is she the one, right? Obviously, there's many other factors. Do you have children together? Did you buy a house together and so on? You basically have three choices. Either you leave her, you break up with her, or you fix her, fix the relationship, fix all that, or you ignore her. You ignore her and her mood. Now, if you decide to leave her, obviously, as I said, do that after you calm down and you can have a discussion with her on eye level and explain her, hey, babe, you know, uh, I thought about this long and hard and I think whatever this is and da 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 it's not gonna work because of this reason or we're just not matching in this and I would rather not waste your time. You can even explain it in that sense, you know, you can say, hey, uh, I know I'm not the right one for you so therefore I don't want to waste your time and so on. Now this can be tricky. In the one option is she overstepped. She played outside the rules, she really hurt you, she was acting irrational irrational even over the sense of her being feminine and testing you and you're basically not dealing with her bullshit you're calling her out on her bullshit and you're just not dealing with it this might lead to her opening up to you this might lead to actually a good resolution because it will probably lead to her respecting you more it might if she's self-conscious if she's self-aware if she you know is able to reflect and see her own faults and is not delusionally confident she might also be not and just you know make a big deal out of it and just say goodbye to you but it can be a way to getting to know each other better because clearly she saw a boundary and it can be a lesson for her now don't use it as a tactic you know don't say oh i'm gonna break up with you in the hopes that she will open up to you and uh you know apologize to you and you feel like the bigger man because there's the flip side of that Maybe she was rational. Like I said before, often I thought I'm right and I wasn't. If you are, after every little conflict, threatening with breakup and hoping that will fix it and hoping she will, you know, open up to you that way or apologize or break out in tears and tell you how amazing you are, this is not a tactic that will work very long. And you're basically proving to her her own point, which is you can't handle her. You know, she tested you, she triggered you a bit, and you broke, you wanna break up, you can't handle it. So she's right, you can't. So don't be surprised if she's like, okay, you know, you're right, we should leave it. And then suddenly you're like, oh, but I mean, uh, I just wanted to like talk it out, you know? So be very careful again to make rash decisions and really think it through and take your time. So again, how do you know if she's reasonable or not? We covered that a little bit before that she might have, you know, crazy psychopathic tendencies. Again, tricky topic, hard to say, a million factors, every relationship is different, 
But in general, respect yourself, don't be a pushover, but also be very aware of your own triggers and be reflective, be conscious, calm down, practice meditation, and then you have to kind of figure it out for yourself. Or as I said, book a call with one of us or ask a psychologist. Now, next one, fix her. If for every reason breaking up is not an option, you can try to fix her. The secret about fixing your woman or your friend or your parents or anyone is you can't, especially if they don't ask for it. Obviously, there's people that are realizing they have a problem or they want to improve themselves or they want to improve your, their communication skills, right? Those are the kind of guys who come on our workshops, which I have massive respect for every time. But in general, you trying to fix somebody uninvited just won't work and will not be well received. And who are you anyway trying to fix someone and thinking that you can? Start with yourself, fix yourself first. Again, a passage from our homeboy uh, David Data on this. He's writing the following. The feminine always seems chaotic and complicated from the perspective of the masculine. The next time you notice yourself trying to fix your woman so that she will no longer fill in the blank, relax and give her love by touching her and telling her that you love her when she is the way whatever you filled in a blank with. Embrace her or wrestle with her or scream and yell for the heck of it, but make no effort to bring an end to that which pisses you off. Practice love instead of trying to bring an end to the quality that bothers you. You can't escape the tussle with the feminine. Learn to find humor in the unending emotional drama the feminine seems to enjoy so much. The love that you magnify may realign her behavior, but you have your effort to fix her and your frustration never will. The world and your woman will always present you with unforeseen challenges. You are either living fully, giving her your gift in the midst of those challenges, even today, or you're waiting for an imaginary future which will never come. Which brings me into the third option on how to react, ignoring her moods slash dealing with it. Now dealing with it is most of the time the best option but obviously also kind of the most difficult one because you have to be relaxed and just let it go. Because don't forget, often, as David Data said, and I repeat it, and in my personal experience, she hasn't been toxic, toxic. She has just been crazy. She's just been feminine. She's been testing you. She's been in her crazy storm and she sees, are you the rock in the middle of the ocean who can just be there for her even if she's not you know totally reasonable she needs to be able to trust you in that therefore she wants you to just deal with it she wants you to ignore it that girl i told you about before she would often say really rude things when she's angry you know i was like what the fuck you you're saying those things and she's like oh but i said it when i'm angry i didn't mean it yeah it just made no sense for me at the beginning it makes much more sense now. Does it make 100% sense for me yet? No, to be honest, you know, I'm still learning all that. But there's definitely truth in those words. Because don't forget, you might still in your, you know, overreacting triggered mood think that you overstepped and that's enough and she's a crazy person and she's toxic when really, again, she's just pushing those little buttons to see, can he handle me? Is he a man I can trust? Is he a man that even if I'm not at my best, he can just be stable, focus on his work, focus on his higher mission and just accept that I'm not always Mrs. Nice Girl and pretty and everything is always perfect and there's rainbows. My, my girl actually said that. You think always rainbows flying out of my ass? <laughs> um, so that's what she means by that. And, you know, I, I, had, I made that experience again myself with different women who were like, the harder they are and the more desired and the more feminine, the better the sex is. It comes with this testing. They might say things in a, you know, when they're angry, they might say things they don't even mean. And they even say that the next day. I'm like, you said a horrible thing. That was very, you know, th that hurt me. Uh, that triggered me. And they're like, yeah, but I said it when I was angry. I didn't mean it. Uh, you know, I'm sorry if it hurt you, but it wasn't really me. Another way to put it, which is, yeah, I wrote it down here, is how Amy Winehouse put it in her song, Stronger, which I really like, and you should listen to the whole song. She's saying, she's singing, but I'm gonna read it. You should be stronger than me. You've been here seven years longer than me. Don't you know you're supposed to be the man? 
not pale in comparison to who you think I am. You always want to talk it through, I don't care. I always have to comfort you when I'm there. But that's what I need you to do, stroke my hair. So she's saying basically, just ignore what I said, just stroke my hair, let's just fuck, you know, let's just, let's just leave it be, this is the past, now is now. Furthermore, she sings, why do you always put me in control? All I need is for my man to live up to his role. Always want to talk it through, I'm okay. Always have to comfort you every day. But that's what I need you to do. Are you gay? <laughs> it's pretty harsh words and if you listen to the whole song, it can hurt a little bit. For sure hurt me when I first really listened to that song and I was like, damn, she's right. That song might teach you more about women than uh, one or the other whole red pill dating coach channel from a guy reporting from his bedroom. So what does Amy want? What is Amy communicating in that song? She wants you to not make a big deal out of it. You know, you, she says, you've been here seven years longer than me, which basically means she's seven years younger. You're the man, be the man, brush it off. Why are you making such a big deal out of something some stupid girl says, you know? Do, do you respect yourself even? You know, why do you suddenly respect my words? I'm talking for her now, then you, you're a strong man, brush it off, just hug me, just stroke my hair, just fuck me, fuck the shit out of me, and let's fucking eat popcorn and watch a movie. Which brings me to part five, how to deal with it. Now, assuming she is not a crazy, toxic, you know, unhealthy girlfriend slash wife, what are the different options to deal with her moods? Now, ignoring it and just going back to work, you know, going back, working on your mission is often the best solution. Women, we repeated that over and over in this video, they say sometimes crazy things. Their, you know, their moods are up and down. They're in their feminine essence. And don't forget the, at the beginning of the video, they have to do that. And it is feminine and strong men want feminine women. If you want total equalness all the time, you will have a problem. You know, the fact that there is polarity between men and women leads to all the beautiful things as well. It's like the yin, the yang. It's the masculine, the feminine. It's what makes sex good. So accept that, let things go, ignore it, get back to work. She should not be your number one focus anyway. You know, your number one thing as a man should be your mission. That's what she's also testing in a sense as well. You know, can I throw him off his course with one little comment? Also, men used to hold a grudge way longer than women. You know, they're, they're trying to have revenge. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to ruin his future and da da da. And he will pay back and stuff like that. It's very masculine stuff. So if you still think about the little things she said at breakfast all day long, make that ruin your day and make that fuck up your productivity, which will lead to you becoming a stronger man, then again, she's right. She tested you and she proved that you just can't handle her. Now, of course, everything has its limits and a healthy relationship is one where you can open up. So another option to deal with it is opening up. And that can also be a great test of is your woman able to have a normal conversation between not now lovers who is like the masculine, the feminine, but between friends, you know, does she respect you? Does she want to hear you? Does she understand you? So it is obviously totally fine that if it's really something that triggers you, that does throw you off course, that you should know as your partner, then it can be good to open up, share, hey, babe, you know, when you say this, uh, I know you don't mean it, but it reminds me of this situation when I was really young and, you know, I I'm still didn't resolve that and I'm trying, but it's really difficult. So I know it's not a big deal for you when you say it, but it really is a big deal for me and it fucks me up the whole day. And it doesn't really help you. I'm, I'm sad and, and, and I'm not the same anymore. So please don't use that word or please don't say that again or stuff like that, you know? So if you tell her in that sense, then it can make sense to her, you know? Because then in the way I described it, I show, look, it's not that I'm a weak man. It's just like you really have something that I'm still working on and I'm not perfect yet. And confirming to her that you're not perfect is shows strength in itself, you know, being able to being vulnerable with a good backbone is a strong thing in itself. So that can be totally fine. You should be doing that and you should practice communicating with that as well, not just to your lovers, but to your friends and even to your parents as well. That's a great way to build strong relationships. 
because that can be a test for her as well. Does she accept it or not? Is she interested in general in building a stronger bond or is all she wants always testing you, always probing you and doesn't take any blame and doesn't want to change even if it makes you bad. Another added bonus on that, you know, obviously if you're constantly just brushing things off, ignoring things, she might also hold a grudge against you for something, but she just doesn't know how to deal with it because she didn't learn how to communicate. She didn't learn how to open up. So if you're the first one who opens up and almost takes leadership in opening a discussion, you're often giving her the possibility to open up to you as well. She also has traumas. She also has triggers. You probably insulted her already five, 10 times in a relationship, but she just didn't want to bring it up. That happens a lot as well. You know, like once I started opening up to some of my relationships, they're like, yeah, I understand. But you said this and you said that and I didn't complain there. And you know, that was really hurtful. I'm like, really? Oh yeah, fuck, I'm sorry. You know, you should have told me. And they're like, yeah, I didn't know. I thought it's fine. You know, I didn't want to bother you. So you leading a conversation like that and being vulnerable and being you know not defensive not aggressive but like ready to be heard can make her open up and be in that same energy and it can be really good obviously don't be the guy who like amy said you know you always want to talk it through don't be that guy if used well with purpose and intent it can be very powerful and the last one is beep beep no make love you know don't make war make love a lot of times a girl was testing and probing me not because she wants an argument not because you know she's trying to test me even or you know is just testing my masculinity she just wants me to get a little more aggressive in bed literally many girls shocker are into hard sex are into bdsm are into the strong masculinity in the bedroom and if you never give it to them you know the only choice to get that beast out of you is tease you a little bit, make you a little bit aggressive, you know, joke a little bit about it and uh, kind of make you want to fuck her harder because she's been a bad, bad girl. And girls know that very well. So many times, I know I talked a lot about triggers and traumas and psychology and much more than that. This whole video was about that. Often it is way simpler than that. All she wants is for you to just fuck her harder than usual, for her to feel your love pounding against her over and over again. I've made that experience many times. You know, I had girls who tease me, tease me, tease me, and then their pussy was soaking wet, dripping, dripping wet, because I just fucked them harder and the whole sex was a release of that pressure, you know? It's like what we coach on workshops. Good relationships, good conversations, good everything is a, form of pressure and release so this was not an easy video to make you know obviously uh, there's a lot of landmines that i could step on people might get triggered because they're not aware of their triggers i'm not even aware of all my triggers you know i'm still learning and experiencing but i'm definitely often putting myself in a crossfire i am dating really desired hot women who challenge my boundaries over and over again and i just developed a sense of enjoying that i like that i want to grow i want to grow faster and if you want to grow you know and you always stick with the girls you get and you know uh, you don't really raise your own bar then you will keep being who you are and you won't really progress in not just, you know, you feeling good about yourself because you fucked a hotter girl. No, and you being able to handle those women. So hope that was good. If you made it until here, press like. And if you want to really go deep in this topic, I do offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Click the link below. You can talk to me every week for a couple of weeks. Plus goal setting. Plus I'm keeping you accountable. Plus I'm redoing your whole social media and much more for you to have much higher success in dating. So... Let me know how that video was for you. If you post a story, I would super appreciate it. I always want to read stories of my uh, the guys who comment on my videos. Let me know how it resonated with you and if it triggered anything in you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.